as many of my long-term watchers can attest, I've made a hell of a lot of videos helping guys to be more successful with women. I've covered topics such as approach anxiety, building rapport, banter, sexual escalation, also things more internal like our sense of masculinity and our self-esteems. But there's one particular issue that I've noticed a lot of you men are struggling with uh, that I haven't actually addressed. And that's this, that many of you guys have the issue that when you approach, you get rejected a lot right on the approach. In other words, you have this experience that most women you approach aren't friendly. They look right through you. They treat you like trash. They reject you outright straight away. And I've been accused in the comments of making this feel too easy. In other words, kind of um, lying or, or misleading men into thinking that women are more friendly than they really are. So guys will trust my advice or want to select to work with me as a coach. Um, this, of course, isn't the case, but I want to explain why I haven't addressed this. Uh, first of all, I wasn't aware of it. And the reason is most of my students don't have this problem. And that's a weird one, because why aren't my students having this problem? I mean, don't get me wrong. My students struggle at times. Of course they do. You know, they struggle with things like approach anxiety. They struggle with getting like conversations, running out of things to say, and they become boring and, and they have to leave because they've got nothing else to say. They struggle with women getting the numbers and then flaking, you know, guys struggle with all kinds of things, but not the instant rejection. I mean, my clients do get rejected instantly sometimes, but not consistently, not regularly. In fact, one of the things that most guys experience on their very first session with me is a sense of, wow, women really aren't that mean on the whole. Women can be quite friendly. It's like this complete mind shift. Now, in case you think I'm lying about that, I'm just going to throw up a couple of, uh, field reports that my clients have written right after their very first session with us. So you can go ahead and have a read and pause if you want to, to read the whole thing properly. Now, this isn't about voodoo. I'm not teaching some sort of black magic here. Really what I'm doing with my clients is very early on, I'm finding out the obvious things they're doing that are causing women to reject them quickly. And once they do that, once they uh, approach women correctly, women are on the whole friendly. Now, it doesn't mean that the women are available to the guys, right? It doesn't mean that women are throwing themselves at the guys. It means that when they approach, women are friendly enough. They're happy to chat. They're, you know, smiling. They're in a good mood. Uh, you know, they're doing the, the, I guess, responding in the way that we want them to. So even if they say, got a boyfriend, they'll say, Hey, thanks for approaching. Look, I've got a boyfriend. Unfortunately, you have a good night, right? It's that kind of friendly response, not the mean treating you like your subhuman kind of response that I think a lot of you men are struggling with. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a list of the things that I'm looking out for as a coach that cause that kind of response from women. So this is the things that if you stop doing all these things, most women will respond to you in a friendly way. Okay, so number one is smiling. Too many men, when they approach girls, especially because they're nervous, they've got a lot going through their head, it's in a bar environment, they feel like a fish out of water, or it's at a party, or it's out during the day, and they feel like everyone's watching them, and they don't smile because they're too busy being nervous. And the problem is that when we're nervous, our faces, they kind of go into fear, right? Our eyes go a little bit wider, our body language changes, we look a little bit awkward and strange. And if we're not smiling at the same time, and a woman sees this approach and, and you're like, hey, how's it going? I'm Damien. You know, I saw over here, I thought I'd come and say hello. Okay, that's creepy, right? That is scary. And women will respond accordingly. And one of the things that I find interesting is a lot of men think they're smiling and they're not. So Here's the thing. If you are getting instantly rejected, this is the very first thing you need to look at. Get one of your friends to watch you and getting to say, were you smiling? Like proper big friendly smile when you approached. Because if you weren't, that could be the reason why you're getting instantly rejected way more often than you deserve. Okay, the second thing that I'm always looking out for is are you locking in when you approach? So what do I mean by this? Most guys, when they first go and approach a woman, they're nervous, they haven't done this a lot. What they do is they kind of come in and they kind of, the one foot's like, one foot is, is, is in the group. The other foot is leaned back. They lean back on the back foot. Like, I'm ready to run away if you're not being friendly to me. Uh, like, you can easily reject me and I'll get out of your hair. Don't worry. They're not locking in. In other words, two feet planted firmly on the ground, 
looking at the women, being a part of the group with an added body language that says, I'm here to talk to you and I'm going to talk to you. Not, do you want to talk to me? Is it okay if I, if I stand here? Is that all right? You can't do that. You've got to lock into sets. One of the first things I get every guy to do, in fact, I'll get him to trial approach me and the other guys in the group before they even talk to women to really get that down pat. Lock into the group. Don't be side on where you're kind of like, am I allowed to be here? Just be really like solid, planted. I'm here to talk. That's what your body language has to say. That's the second big thing that I look out for. Number three, which is also very common, is that she cannot hear you easily. This, of course, happens mostly in bars, clubs, and house parties, this kind of louder, louder environment. Even a bar is loud, not even a nightclub. I don't generally coach in nightclubs. I, I pick areas where we, it's possible to, to talk and be heard. But a lot of guys don't speak loudly enough. Now, when we can't hear someone, I don't know if you've ever been somewhere where you can't really understand what they're saying well, it takes a huge amount of cognitive effort to try to focus on what they're saying. That's an unpleasant experience to have too often. And so from a woman's standpoint, if she can't hear you, when you go in and you talk to them, it, you'll notice this. If girls go, sorry, what? What? If, if, in any interaction, if women have to say what or what did you say or lean in more than once, you're in a very rapid downhill trajectory. You have to learn to project your voice. There are um, go to voice coaches online, like um, um, YouTube videos. They will give you some really great vocal activities to do, some practices you can do daily. We practice vocally projecting, talking from your gut to your diaphragm rather than your chest. And you can become much better at being heard in loud club environments. It's a skill you've got to learn or you will be rejected quickly because they can't understand you and like, oh God, whatever, just go away. Stop bothering me. Uh, maybe it's unfair. It is unfair, but it's easy to correct and it does make all the difference. Number four, can you imagine if I go and I approach you uh, in a club and you're a woman picture that for a second and I approach I'm like hey guys how's it going yeah I saw you over here and I th thought I'd come and say hello yeah how's your night going right notice my body language is completely rigid and locked this is something a lot of guys do they're, they're, they're nervous so we already tend to lock up but also we don't know what to do with our bodies Right? We don't, what do I do with my hands? They're kind of just here and I, I know I'm not supposed to bury them in my pockets. I know I'm not supposed to put my hands on my hips. Uh, what am I supposed to do? There's this awkwardness that takes over us when we're self-conscious and we're aware that someone's watching us like this cute, cute girl we're talking to. So what do we do? There's a habit you've got to build, which is gesticulating, talking with your hands. It is a really easy way to occupy your body and your, 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 your hands and make you less nervous, but even more importantly, it makes her feel more relaxed. So notice the difference. If I'm talking to you on camera, if I did this the whole time, and I'm just talking to you like this and giving you information like this, as opposed to what I normally do, which is talk a lot with my hands and move my head around, and I'm, my whole body is moving as I'm communicating. That makes someone feel more relaxed. It also makes it easier to pay attention to them. It's an attention grabbing thing, which is talking with your hands and moving your body. And I know a lot of guys aren't used to that. And a lot of guys will say, well, how do I talk with my hands? Move them around. Like notice, even if I just do this while I'm talking, like it, it almost looks normal. And then I'm being really over the top now, right? So just be in the habit of moving them around when you talk. Um, moving them around, even if it feels chaotic, is better than standing absolutely rigid. And this is something that I tell my guys all the time. Just get them moving. Get your body moving. Become looser. Don't lock up when you're talking. Make that a habit anytime you're talking to groups of people. Um, and then you'll do it by default when you're talking to women. But it makes her and you feel more relaxed. And that's critical because if her very first impression of you, and this is the thing, this is what every uh, piece of advice I've given you so far has been about, make her feel relaxed. If you're making her feel nervous and tense just by by lieu of the fact that, that, that you, you're looking awkward and making you feel unsafe because you're not smiling or your body language isn't loose or any of these things, if she's feeling nervous because of your presence, that's not a value add. That's a value subtract. So she's not going to want you there talking to her, right? So she has to feel like this is going to be fun. For you to be there is going to add to her night, not pull away. So that body language and moving and gesticulating, that's a critical step. Now, guys, before I continue on with my list, I want to remind you that I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching online in Zoom sessions. If you'd like the opportunity to work with me to help to turbocharge your dating life, go ahead and check the link below and uh, find out more details about that. Number five, some of, guys, some of you already get this right. I'd say about half of you already get this one right, but it's still critical, which is how you dress and present. 
I still get, if I've got four guys in a coaching session, one or two of them will be dressed in a way, this isn't a bar or a club, one or two you're going to be dressed in a way that's not good enough. Um, meaning um, you either dress like your mom picked your clothes for you, you know what I mean? It's, it's sort of very drab, very boring, doesn't fit properly, very loose, uh, too casual, way too casual. You're always better off being too formal than too casual, by the way. When I, I was just in Vegas, uh, I was dressed up way more than most of the guys were because a lot of people are pretty casual in Vegas now, but I got a lot of attention for it, right? So when you're dressed up, it's still a good thing. It was good attention. Um, you know, you better be overdressed than underdressed. And so, yes, not being dressed well. Basically, being dressed in a way that will cause a woman to form a negative first opinion of you before you've even opened your mouth. It's not hard to dress well. In fact, you could just walk past a men's clothing store, uh, you know, something a little bit trendy, doesn't need to be hyper trendy, and just pick what's on the mannequin. <laughs> even if you did that, you'd be miles ahead of where some of you may be. As I said, about half of you get this wrong, which means half of you are getting it right. But it's the thing you do to be mindful of that she sees you coming and she instantly goes, oh no, this is a guy who lives in his mom's basement. Crap. If that's the very first oppression you're giving, right? Or your nails are dirty or your, your beard isn't well trimmed, right? You're just looking unkempt and like all over the place. She can form a negative first impression and, and write you off before you say a word. So that's important as well. Number six accounts for about 25% of you, and that is bad breath and bad body odor. The terrible thing about bad breath or bad body odor is that no one tells you about it. That's the first thing. Second thing, almost no women will respond well to you at all, ever. So if you have bad breath and you're talking to women, you will find that you'll have an almost 100% rejection rate no matter what you do, right? So it is, it is absolutely destructive to any interaction. You must smell good. I know you've probably heard it before, but I need to say it again because you're not all getting it right. As I said, only 25% of you get this wrong. So it's, it's again, three quarters of you getting it right. But if this is you, it is the absolute destroyer. It will destroy you faster than getting anything else wrong on this list. Now, the seventh and last item on my list, about three quarters of you are guilty of. But the thing is, if you get it only a little bit wrong, it hurts you only a little bit. If you get it a lot wrong, it will destroy your interactions. So there's a bit of a spectrum there. And that is your energy level mismatch. So if you approach women during the day, and this is a mistake that I made in my early learning days. If you approach a woman during the day and you come in there super confident and super like energetic, like, hey, how's it going? I so over here, I wanted to stop you and say, hello, I'm Damien, by the way. That is an energy mismatch most of the time during the day because her energy levels are lower. You're in a low energy environment during the daytime. You need to be like, hey, uh, I know this is totally random. I, I just wanted to come and say hello. I thought you were really cute. Um, I'm Damien, by the way. Right. That kind of low energy vibe has to be there during the day. During the nighttime on the flip side, if you approach some girls and they're laughing and giggling and having a nice time and you're like, hey, guys, I saw you over here and I thought I'd come and say hello. How's your night going? That's going to be because you're lowering your energy level or out in a bar or a club because they want to have fun, because they want to be in a good mood. And here's someone lowering that energy level that they want to build up. That's a negative thing. It's a reason why they don't want you in that interaction, right? It's, it's, it's a very easy reason for women to say, sorry, we're not interested because you're dragging them down when they want to go up. So in a nightclub, your energy level has to be higher. Now, the general rule is anytime you approach, you must be at their level or slightly higher. So if girls are dancing, you have to be really high energy to hold their attention, which is why generally I, I don't focus on dancing girls at all when I'm coaching, at least in the beginning. Um, but yes, you need to be at their level or slightly higher. And it's hard when we're nervous, when we're not used to being energetic people, that can be a very difficult one for us. But if you come in too low, it doesn't matter what else you do right, it can be really, really hard to connect. Now, there are some workarounds. For example, if you purposely choose the introverted girls, and yes, they are in bars and clubs, I promise you, you can find the quiet natured girls in bars and clubs. They're always there. They represent maybe 15% of the women present. So it's not a sort of super high number. But if you've got 100 women in a big bar, if you've got 50 women in a big bar, you know, five of them, right, are going to be low energy people in general. In fact, they're not comfortable in a bar environment. You can Spot those girls, you can approach them with that lower energy level because she's not going to be at the high energy level and she'll be more comfortable with you there. But that's kind of a workaround, right? And it's going to still result in a lot of rejections until you get good at picking the right girls to approach that way. So you need that general rule. Always approach at their energy level or slightly higher. 
Because yes, you will get rejections. And if that mismatch is too out, in other words, if you're too low energy for the girls that you're approaching in the bar, you are going to get spat out consistently. So guys, obviously there technically could be other reasons why you're going to get rejected quickly, but this is a pretty, this is going to cover 90 to 95% of all of your cases. And it's hard, of course, without watching you personally and being, that's what's going on. It's a little hard for me to correct you, but the reality is you really honestly should have an experience. And again, my clients get rejected instantly too sometimes, but if you were to approach 10 women in a night, your instant rejections, three or four at the, at the, you know, the high end, uh, would be instant rejections and the rest should be friendly enough. You know, you, you get another one or two that talk to you for a bit and kind of fade out. And then you get, you know, four or five that are, that are happy and chatting and, and having a whole conversation with you. That's roughly what you should expect in the beginning or relatively early on, right? That's what I expect in my first night, first, second night. That's what it's looking like with the clients. So that's what it can look like for you. It doesn't have to be super hard, but you do need to get those things right. Otherwise you can face that instant rejection, right? Where they don't even give you a chance. And it's frustrating, I know. Now guys, if you think I've missed anything critical out, let me know. If you think there's a big one that causes that instant rejection that I haven't thought of, write it down in the comments below. As always, guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel because I know most of you who watch me regularly aren't subscribed and give me a thumbs up because that helps me a ton. As always, I look forward to seeing you guys in my future videos.